distinguished presidents, distinguished secretary general, distinguished prime minister, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you very warmly to the presidential palace in Warsaw at the extraordinary summit of the Bucharest Nine NATO Eastern Flank States with the participation of special guests, President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, and NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg. Today's summit is of particular importance. We are meeting almost exactly on the anniversary of the event which has forever changed the history of our part of Europe and which has an impact on the security situation across the world. I'm speaking about the brutal, full-scale Russian aggression of Ukraine, which started on February 24 last year. One day later, we met in this hall to discuss the most significant challenges facing our states, facing the entire North Atlantic Alliance, and to speak about the ways to support our friends in Ukraine. What we wish to do today is to think together among closest allies about our next steps in the run-up to the B9 summit in Bratislava and the NATO summit in Vilnius, and about the possibilities to provide further support to Ukraine. Thank you now, and I give the floor to the President of Romania, Mr. Klaus Johannes, co-host of the summit. Thank you very much, dear President Biden, dear President Tuda, dear colleagues, dear Secretary General Stoltenberg. It is extremely relevant to meet again in the Bucharest 9 format, which I launched in 2015 together with Andrzej Duda, President Duda, in, in the eve of the one-year mark since war returned to Europe. The war has brought nothing but suffering and despair, killing and displacing of millions of Ukrainians, unprecedented destruction and uncertainty. We, the leaders of the Eastern flank, have the duty to stand firm in defense of our peace. We must continue to stand firm in delivering on our commitments to support Ukraine for as long as it needs to win this war. This is what Romania will continue to do. We are not alone in this endeavor. Our effort is one of transatlantic scale and scope, and I welcome the presence today of President Joseph Biden reconfirming the substance of our Bucharest 9 format and the commitment of the U.S. administration towards the eastern flank security. This commitment is very solid and forward-looking, increased U.S. military presence that needs to continue, and the preparation of a U.S. strategy for the Black Sea. I also welcome the participation of NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg for timely and open coordination. Almost one year ago, Russia tried to destroy the European and Euro-Atlantic security and the rules-based international order. Russia is acting on a pattern of aggressive conduct, which we have already witnessed in the Republic of Moldova, in Georgia, and in Ukraine itself. Today, these partners benefit from Allied support for their long-term resilience, which is needed to help them achieve lasting peace, stability, and prosperity. We also strongly support Ukraine's Euro-Atlantic perspective to make sure that this brutal war against Ukraine is Russia's final act, we also must be resolute in deterring further aggression 
and rolling back the current one. NATO is standing strong and showing clear commitment towards Ukraine and its people. The B9 is stronger than ever. I thus look forward to continue our coordination on our way to a successful NATO summit in Vilnius. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And now I give the floor to the co-host of summit, to the president of the Slovak Republic, Madam Zuzana Chaputova. Thank you very much, dear President Duda, dear President Johannes, dear President Biden, Secretary General, dear allies. Uh, as you mentioned, Mr. President Duda, we are meeting in very uh, special time because of first anniversary of Russia aggressions uh, in, uh, in uh, Ukraine. This year has made us stronger and more united. And we, the countries on the eastern flank, uh, are more protected than ever. And uh, we together passed the test of solidarity and humanity because of our help to Ukraine. President Biden, your presence here is another proof that our transatlantic uh, unity is stronger as ever. And it's uh, an opportunity to discuss uh, our expectations from uh, NATO summit in Vilnius. For example, how we ensure that there are no gray zones in our defense or how we adapt our defense spending to our uh, security environment and how we ensure that Ukraine is able to, def to defend itself as long as it takes and how to move practical but also political uh, relations between NATO and Russia. This is what we will discuss today, but also in B9 summit in Bratislava in June and in Vilnius in July. Thank you, President Duda, for hosting us, and I look forward to our discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam President. Excellencies, dear friends, we are all delighted to have with us today a special guest who has accepted the invitation to the summit, the President of the United States of America, Mr. Joseph Biden, welcome, sir. We ask you to take the floor, please. Well, thank you all very much. Uh, and I'm delighted to be here. Some of you may remember <clears throat> uh, years ago when we were expanding NATO, I was the one in the United States Senate who was pushing the hardest to expand NATO for membership of many of you sitting around this table. And uh, the irony is that uh, one of the last conversations I had with the, uh, our friend in Russia was uh, <clears throat> I said, you keep asking for the Findalization of NATO. You're going to get the NATOization of Finland. Well, it happened. Not only are we as strong as we are, we're stronger. And uh, I say to my fellow presidents that uh, I'm honored to be with you here <clears throat> and uh, so many strong NATO allies. And uh, the Secretary General, who I think has done an incredible job, an incredible job for a long time. I uh, rely on his judgment a great deal. You know, the B-9 was founded in 2015 after Russia attempted annexation of Crimea. And today, as we approach the uh, one-year anniversary of Russia's further invasion, it's even more important that we continue to stand together. And I think this is proof of this, how strongly we feel. That's why I wanted to meet all of you in person here today. As NATO's eastern flank, you're on the front lines of our collective defense, and you know better than anyone what's at stake in this conflict, not just for Ukraine, but for the freedom of democracies throughout Europe and around the world. You know, when um, that's what President Zelensky and I spoke about when I was in Kyiv two days ago. And uh, the leaders around this table have repeatedly stepped up to reaffirm our shared commitment to all these values. We provided critical security assistance to Ukraine and critical support to literally millions of refugees. We've helped ensure Ukrainians can access basic services, and together we'll continue our enduring support for Ukraine 
as they defend their freedom. Over the past year, with your countries, with countries around this table providing collective leadership, we've also strengthened NATO, a commitment of the United States to NATO, and I've said it to you many times, I'll say it again, is absolutely clear. Article 5 is a sacred commitment the United States has made. We will defend literally every inch of NATO, every inch of NATO. And uh, it's, this is an important moment. I look forward to the discussion and the next steps we can take together and to keep our alliance strong and to further deter aggression. Because what literally is at stake is not just Ukraine, it's freedom. The idea that over 100,000 forces would invade another country after a war since World War II, nothing like that has happened. Things have changed radically. We have to, we have to make sure we change them back. So thank you all very much for allowing me to be with you, and I look forward to our private discussions. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And now I pass the floor to the NATO Secretary General, Mr. Ian Stoltenberg. Please. Andre, it's uh, a pleasure to be back in Warsaw and to meet with all the B9 uh, heads of state and government and also with uh, President uh, Biden. And uh, Joe, I would like to say to you that I'm so uh, pleased and so impressed by the outstanding leadership uh, you show and your visit to Kiev uh, sent a clear message of steadfast support to Ukraine and America's ironclad, uh, ironclad commitment to the security of uh, Europe. Let me also thank you for uh, hosting the next uh, uh, NATO summit after Vilnius in the United States. Uh, one year since uh, the launch of Russia's invasion, President Putin is not preparing for peace. On the contrary, he is preparing for more war. So we must sustain and step up our support for Ukraine. We must give Ukraine what they need uh, to prevail. We don't know when uh, the war will end, but when it does, we need to ensure that history does not repeat itself. We have seen the Russian pattern uh, of aggression over many years. Georgia in 2008, Crimea and Donbas in 2014, and then the full-fledged invasion of Ukraine last year. We cannot allow Russia to continue to chip away at European security. We must break the cycle of Russian aggression. NATO allies have never been more united. We will protect every inch of allied territory based on our Article 5 commitment to defend each other, one for all and all for one. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary General. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the part of the summit open for media. So I kindly ask the media to leave the room, please.